and welcome back to the layout. This is Dan here as always. And for this video, I'm going to be showing you how I accurately portray, weather, and modify um, a stock model into a real prototype, so to speak. And what I mean by this is I'm going to basically show you in this video how to prototypically model an uh, uh, accurate version of a CSX unit. Um, what I have is an Atherin RTR CSX uh, SD40-2 in the YN3 paint scheme. Uh, this is number 8044, and this is actually a unit I've seen before, uh, both in this scheme and in its new scheme, where it's currently wearing the boxcar logo, or YN4. But um, I recently got this from a friend who needed this to be weathered, and he wanted to, a lot of things done to it, uh, kind of touched up in a, a few ways, kind of modified to look a little more accurate to the real 8044. Um, but what I saw here in a, as a video opportunity was the fact that I could kind of go ahead and show my locomotive weathering in basic detailing and such. Um, so I thought this would be a good idea uh, for a video. And I will have some more how-to videos coming soon, uh, just before I get into this, and it'll be on coal cars, so stay tuned for that as well. But I thought I would relish the opportunity and go ahead and start working on this one right away. Now. At the start, this is the newer run of these units. Atherin just released these uh, only a couple months ago. They've been on the shelves for a while now, and you, a few of these have popped up, but this one is factory brand new, right out of the package. And um, thankfully, um, I was able to get some photos of it. Now, step one, really, I want to say before I get into this, when I model a unit like this, and I've mentioned it over and over again, when I model a unit like this, I like to have prototype photos because if you don't have prototype photos you're basically weathering in the dark it's so good to have an accurate portrayal of a unit like this and in my in my sense I want to do it as accurately as possible if I'm gonna take the time to do it if I'm gonna put all that effort to, into it I want it to look good and I want it to be accurate that's how I, I basically work here so I'm just gonna try to modify a few things on this unit and I, I have noticed a few things that I do need to change and I'll get into that and uh, I'll just go ahead and get into that uh, but to start, I mean, right out of the box, this unit looks pretty good. It's uh, kind of top of the line for Atherin products right now. These look really good. They run well. They're pretty well detailed. They look good. I like these myself, and I was actually thinking of getting a 8044 for my personal collection, but for now, I don't think I'll, I'll really invest in that because uh, currently I'm working on some other things, so it'll come later. But it's kind of nice that I get to work on one, actually, right now, so I can kind of see how it'll turn out, so I know what to do when I get my 8044. So this is kind of cool. Um, but for the most part, this is a former chassis system unit, as far as I can tell. Um, it's still got the nose light, as you can see. And you got the 5-tone K5LA up top. And then you have the, um, the bell which is mounted on the high hood. Now, this possibly even, I don't know if it even is a chassis unit, because they also had the Seaboard Coastline SD40, so this actually might be a Seaboard Coastline unit. I, I could be wrong about that. Um, it could either be a chassis unit or a Seaboard Coastline unit. Also kind of thinking it's a Seaboard Coastline unit because it doesn't have a plow. Uh, the chassis units always had the rock plows, if you recall that particular feature on these chassis units, and then they later got larger plows. Um, but for the most part, the unit looks pretty good right out of the box, but there are a few things that I got to change to it, and I'll just go ahead and show you this here. Okay, so first of all, um, the guy I'm working, I'm doing this model for, uh, sent me photos of the real 8044, which is right here, and as you can see, I gotta try to figure out how to. I'm just gonna show this to you right now, then. Um, the first thing I notice right out of the box, right, right into my eyes, for one, is this hatch right here. If you look at the Atherin model, up here on the top of the low, or the short hood, you'll notice that it's not there. On the real unit, it is. Now, this is a little bit of a problem, and um, what I'm actually going to do on this sense, just to clarify the, this real quick and get over it, is I'm probably going to contact the guy and figure if he wants that changed or not and if he does then I'll go ahead and change it and then I'll proceed to get the part and then repaint it and blend everything together with weathering um, so that that'll come later now the second issue that I also noticed with this unit is that if you look at the nose look very closely the cutouts for class lights are not there this was a feature on these units that um, for really any road nowadays they just remove those and then it's just a basically blank sheet metal 
and on, unfortunately with the Athard models, they all model them with these uh, cluster uh, or these bulging uh, class light details. And it's kind of annoying if you're modeling a modern unit like this. And since the real 8044 doesn't have these, and I think I can uh, paint match this yellow, um, I'm going to go ahead and just remove these. As you can see, I already actually attempted to remove this one, but I'll save this one to actually show you guys how to do that. Um, and then the next little issue that I also noticed with this unit is the K5LA itself. Um, on this rather up-to-date photo of 8044, you'll also notice that the horn has been relocated to behind the dynamic brake fans um, right here. Now this is common on a lot of CSX units because a lot of these back in the early 2000s and into the, like 2008 when they really started doing this still had the horns up on the cab and because of noise obviously and the vibrations they ended up just simply moving the horns back here uh, so it wasn't so much of a problem for the crews or giving them headaches and <laughs> you know but uh, so that's another little thing that I'll correct and that should be an easy fix that I'll show you here but for the most part this is really how I do this the first thing I like to do is always get prototypical photos and in this case I have them and I like to be able to look over the model and determine what I need to do to make it more accurate and then the next step will be to modify it fix the problems which we'll do we'll get those addressed and then the the next step will be of course uh, to start basically the finishing touches which will begin the weathering stage and we'll get also into that in a minute and I'll also actually show you because with this project it's an interesting one because the customer actually wants me to add reflective safety stripes to this unit since the factory stripes are obviously just printed on there's no reflection to them so I'm actually going to take some real ref my uh, reflective tape and actually make new safety stripes for this which are actually reflective so that's, that'll be pretty cool so with that all with all that address we'll go ahead and get right into this so the first thing I'm going to do with this is like I said is to remove these class lights uh, since the real 8044 doesn't have these and there's no real science to this there's no real explaining to do I'm just going to simply use a uh, number 17 exacto chisel blade uh, which will be this is one, actually one that's brand new and this will be what I use to remove it now there's like I said nothing to it but with something like this where it's something this fine a detail and you're trying to preserve the factory paint job as carefully as possible you gotta be very careful and I don't recommend you try to do something like this with a used blade or anything like this when I do something like this I always get a fresh blade so what I do to start I'll try to do this with the camera in my way it's not going to be easy but I'll try is I kinda start to kinda dig into it like this and just work really slowly like that and I just hit the grab iron but that's alright uh, it's just a matter of going slow with this I do believe that's an NSG vote coming got it I'm just gonna go across like this that last little bit and there you go it's removed alright so the next step is to remove this horn what I'm gonna also do is use a larger chisel blade uh, for this. I've, I've done this multiple times and what I've found removing horns from the stock models you want to be very careful for one you don't want to you don't want to damage the factory paint again and two you want to be very careful with these brass horns because they're very easy to dent and chip and it's 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 extremely easy to bend one of these bells out of shape and you don't want to do that and as you can see um, I've pretty much gotten it loosened at this point just by kind of twisting it with my finger and it's pretty much ready to go but it's still a little stuck right there so I'm gonna try to take this chisel and try to get under there and loosen it I think there's some like stick glue or sticky glue in there or something that's kind of holding it back so I'm just gonna try to pry it out like this and I think I might I might have it Let's see if we can get it and then I'll just take my fingers and twist it out like this, nice and slow. Boom. There you have it. 
So now that the horn is removed, what I'm going to do next is take a little piece of styrene, which I've already cut to size, and I'm going to plate this hole just like what they do on the real units. They just take sheet metal and cover up the holes. It's not like they really bondo it or fill the hole. They just plate it over. It's just simpler that way and a lot faster and cheaper to do. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of wire like this as a precision applicator. I'm just going to take a little drop of this glue and I'm going to transfer a little bit, a little bit on around this area here. And it doesn't take that much. This will set in place almost immediately. And I'm going to take my uh, styrene. Oop. Sorry about that. And I'm just going to stick it on. There. Just like that. So that, that looks pretty good. And like I said, when I do all my touch-up painting, I'll be sure to cover that back up. So that for now that's done. What we'll do next is go ahead and reinstall the horn to the back of the dynamic brake blister. Sorry about that. So we'll be right back there. So we'll go ahead and get into that. So with this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remount the horn back where it is in the correct location, which is right here next to this little hatch. And I'm just going to basically put it down so you can kind of see it. It's going to basically be like that right in that area. So I can right in the photos just see where it is and it's going to be about right here uh, one, two, three, that's three bolt heads on this section here and it's going to be right in between these two bolts right here. So what I'm going to do is take my X-Acto blade and just put a little hole there like that and now what I'll do is take a little drill bit drill this hole out and then I'll remount the horn and voila the horn is installed um, and I just simply drilled that out and then I trimmed the stand of the horn down a little bit and then glued it in place so it's not going anywhere and it is in fact in the correct position just like on the real 8044 so we'll go ahead and move on to the next steps alright so what I'm going to do now is try to um, paint over these areas where I remove the class lights and what I've, what I've got here is a custom blend of orange and yellow which is basically what CSX Y and 3 yellow is, is an orange yellow mixture so I'm going to get a little more paint on my brush here and because this paint is kind of thin it's going to take a few coats probably two or three so I'm just going to do this in various stages so I'm not going to show you the whole step obviously but just the just trying to get these covered up so what I'm going to do is just kind of blotch the paint on there like this just to cover up these areas even this little scratch right here This one. All right. So the next step that I'm going to do, um, I kind of decided while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and install the fuel tank details, which Athen provides in the, in the packaging. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and detail the fuel tank and set that aside. I don't really need to show you guys that because there's nothing really to it. It's just a matter of gluing pipes to the tank. Um, so I'm not going to show that. But in the next step, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, working for on the reflective safety stripes. So now the fuel tank is done as you can see I'll bring it over real quick. You can see I installed all the details to the ends, all the piping the hose tray and all that, or the uh, the uh, drip pan actually. Um, so that's all installed and for the time being I'm going to keep this off the unit for weathering and um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and start uh, to add the safety stripes to the sills. So what I'm going to be using is um, Western Safety Reflective Safety uh, safety Tape this stuff here and you can get this at um, Harbor Freight for about 10 bucks it's about 9.98 a roll I think but with tax it's about pretty much $10 so um, this is it's pretty economical in the sense though that you get a whole bunch of this stuff and it'll last you a lifetime so it's good um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and show you how I cut these stripes out and then I'll go ahead and start installing them one at a time I'll only show you a few though like I'll probably just work in this section here just to give you the general idea and then go ahead and go all the way around and then show you the after result so what we have here is the tape and as you can see I actually already have a pre-cut strip here ready to go and what I do when I when I when you cut this stuff is you want to use a metal straight edge don't use wood or any other like plastic you're just gonna you're just gonna damage it and then you won't have a perfectly clean edge because it has to be absolutely completely straight and flat 
when you make these cuts it's very important so a metal straight edge works best and then I always use a brand new hobby knife blade uh, to cut these so what I'm going to do is basically determine a strip about this size here looking at the model or the stripes on the model and then I'm just going to cut it out like this now that we got the stripes cut out what I'm going to do oops sorry is I'm going to take these strips and what you do is you take them off the end of the exacto knife and you take them over to the model and I just put them right over the addition the factory stripes and then just apply them like this and you can do this pretty fast uh, once you get enough cut out you can just kinda just stick them on it's really no big deal it, it's very easy to do as you can see there's nothing really to it you're just making sure that they're all straight and even so the safety stripes are all installed on both sills uh, front to back so I'll go ahead and try to demonstrate for you how these work uh, so you can kind of see for yourself and I just take a flashlight and slowly bring it up and you can kind of see that they start to reflect it's really hard to see though it's still broad daylight here but they do reflect if you can see that I'll try to zoom in and see what happens you kind of see that they do reflect a little so that's pretty cool I think it came out pretty good so the next step will be to start on the weathering alright so now on to the weathering materials of choice for this locomotive I'm going to be using my classic blend of Anita's acrylics I got my black my earth brown and my white which we'll use for highlights later on so you can kind of exclude that for now but um, these are going to be my base coat or for my base coat of weathering and what we'll use to finish off the unit uh, in the final stages of weathering are chalk pestles or artist earth tones and this is a really old pack this is from like 1980 something I've had it for all these years now but uh, um, I like to use chalk pestles because they they help to add a, an extra extra realm of detail and realism and depth to the model um, especially with blacks you mix blacks together some earth browns and some rust, rust shades as I've kind of demonstrated before if you've seen some of my how-to videos um, it really helps to add a extra extra depth of detail to the model. So we'll use these in the final stage of weathering. But for now, what we're going to do is start with our um, acrylics. And what we'll go ahead and do is start on the trucks. And uh, we'll paint the wheel faces first. So with that said, what we'll do is remove our um, truck side frames. And what I have is just simply a screwdriver. And I like to get under here and just kind of try to like pry them up just so I can pop them off like this. It's pretty easy to do. But the key here is to try to weather the wheels because we need, that's an important step is to be able to weather those. You, want, you don't want them to be shiny metal rolling down the tracks. It looks very unrealistic. And at the same time, you want to be able to coat them all the way. And the only way to do that is to remove the truck side frame so you can completely paint these. So I'll go ahead and get some acrylic together and we'll go ahead and hit these. All right, so I'm just gonna take my paint, which is a mix of earth brown and black for a grime tone and just go ahead and start paint them. Uh, go ahead and start to paint these. I should have said. And just get it up on there. I'm not too concerned about getting it on the actual uh, the actual flange itself because what I'll do in the final stage is just clean those off so I'm not too worried about getting paint on that for now. But you still want to be a little careful. You obviously don't want to just dab it on there. You just go around like this nice and controlled and just paint and these look really good once you get them painted and then you get the trucks whether they really just blend right in like they're net like it's naturally weathered it really looks good Alright, so there's the first truck, and we'll go ahead and move on to the next ones, and then I'll go ahead and start actually weathering the underbody. Alright, so we got the wheels finished up, and the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and start weathering the underbody of the engine. And I like to do this pretty thoroughly, so what I do to start while the truck's frames are, or the truck side frames are still off, is I like to just go ahead, you know, the tripod's in the way so it makes it kind of difficult, but I like to just go ahead and just start kind of working it into these areas up in here like this. just start kind of building up a layer of grime kind of like that and just start kind of getting in there and as I kind of work towards 
down here, what I like to do is take it like this, and I just like to kind of get in here and start kind of working these colors in just nice and gently like this, as you can see. Kind of like that, and I'll just keep moving here, and then we'll keep we'll kind of move around this area here. I'm not too concerned about the air compressor because I'll that's not very dirty anyways. So I'm just going to take a little bit of a an acrylic like this and kind of just work it off like that. Kind of make it look like it's kind of just in those nooks and crannies really. It's rather clean on the side of the tank itself. And then I just keep working down the side like this. Just working into those little areas to build up the grime level just like this. Alright, so with the underbody done, I'll just go ahead and reinstall my side frames on the trucks. And I just pop right back on. And then I'll take some earth brown and go ahead and start hitting these. And with this, I'm using a medium sized brush to kind of really help to build this up quicker, uh, quickly. Using a smaller brush works too, but I find that it's a little harder to kind of build it up quicker. So, just ignore my phone there. <laughs> kind of a. And the trucks are pretty much done at this point, so now what I'm going to do is just kind of start working on this sill here. Working a little color into the step wells, and I'm just going to basically go like this on the battery boxes, and then wipe some of that grime off. So it's really just building up in these nooks and crannies, like I said, as you can see. And then you just kind of keep working it down like this. And there goes one of those dainty plastic handrails. I really don't like these these Celcon handrails because they're very delicate you gotta be really careful with them and that's something I actually forgot to mention there guys um, when wa weathering these Atherin models by brush it's, it gets a little tricky because you gotta be really really careful about those handrails I know some people will actually take those handrails off during weathering but I like to be able to weather those while I'm working so it's kinda one of those things it's like a win-lose situation I guess but um, let me just grab a little more paint now with this, I'm, on this uh, part here, I'm actually going to get a little darker shade here. I'm going to use less earth brown and more of a dark black and kind of try to represent more of like oil streaking down the sides where the fluids might have been flushed at a time, as you can see. Kind of something simple like that. And just keep working it in nice and gently. Just like that. And I'm using, obviously, with this, I'm weathering the unit with my prototype photos which I'm, I have out of the out of the way, you can't really see them but this is what I'm using to weather them uh, or weather the, the unit and the sills are pretty clean on this so I'm just kinda keeping it simple as you can see but it looks pretty good and it's just kinda working along there's a little bit of grime on this area up here so I'm just gonna kinda keep working on that you can't really see the my weathering actually I'm noticing looking at my camera you can't really see it very well because of the lighting but I mean that's a little better but yeah, I don't know. You get the idea though, it's just a matter of working in those small little areas. Just trying to get as much of that covered as possible and doing it just like in the photos. So, um, after I get most of the side done here along the sill, what I'll start doing is working on the actual body of the engine. And the first thing I'll do in this step is get done with the opposite side and then I'll start painting the grills. I'm going to start painting these grills here and I'm just going to use straight black and a small brush like this. I'm just going to start with the air filter up here and I'm just going to start painting it. There's nothing really much to this. It's pretty simple. But the black is what's going to create the illusion of depth that there's something more behind this and um, what we'll do after we get the grills painted and they're dried and the whole locomotive is clear coated and sealed up we'll go back with our chalk pestles and we'll go ahead and add more depth to these with the chalks as you'll see 
when I get around to it. I'm going to clean this little spot right here with a Q-tip. Just clean that up. So that girl's painted. And then with girls like these where it's more corrugated and there's kind of trying to be more careful, what I'll do is switch to a brush like this. And I'll just take a little black. This is going to get a little tricky here, but I'm just going to try to do this. And then what I do is I just take it and start working it into those chasms like this. So the first thing I do is I hit it at the bottom angle and then at the side like this and then I go back and then hit it at this angle. You gotta be really thorough with these. You gotta make sure that every little spot there is covered up. And I don't know why it blurred like that, but there we go. You just want to try to be really, really thorough. You just take your time and do this slowly. Like I said, cover all the angles. Very, it's very important. And then once you do that, oops, sorry. You take a Q-tip and go along the top like this. And you clean up all that excess paint. Hit this area here. Wipe all that up. You get all this. You get it wet again. And that's how you do it. And I'll do the same thing for this grill back here, but I won't show that. But that's basically the idea. Alright, so as of now, as you can see, this is where I'm at. We've got the grills painted on both sides. You can see. The side frames, the underbody is all weathered up. The sills are done. And the cab is done on the sides. So now what we're going to work on next, uh, before we reinstall the fuel tank, is the fuel tank itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to take the tank like this. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my earth brown and hit these ends. Um, I do it this way because for one thing you don't have the trucks in the way and trying to weather the back end of this fuel tank while it's still under the locomotive is kind of tricky so it kind of helps to cover more angles and do a better job and the fuel tank, the ends of the fuel tank are going to be where it gets the most dirty so obviously this is a important part here but you just want to just want to work it in like this I'm just blotching it in just kind of kind of streak it like that. And then I'll do the same on this end. And just working it in. Just making sure to hit all those angles. It's the important part. And you just kind of start to kind of streak it down a little bit. So with those done, I'll go ahead and reinstall the fuel tank and then we'll go ahead and start working at the top of the fuel tank and on the bottom a little bit as well. Alright, so now with the fuel tank back on, I'm going to go ahead and start weathering the inside of this. And I wanted, like I said, to get this done because I find it a little easier to do it this way for some reason. And I know it seems a little more complicated, but that's just what I found to work the best. So I'm going to take a little more paint and I'm going to start working it into the areas running along the top of the fuel tank like this. Try to keep that tank clean. And then what I'll do is I'm going to take, now that I've got this done, I'm going to take a paper towel and start kind of wiping this up like this. Off the exact the sides of the tank, I mean. And then I take a little more of my grime and kind of focus in on these ends here. And then around these fuel gauges. Just like this. And as you can see, it creates the effect of how you have a, on the direct side of the tank how it's relatively clean, but the grime is mostly based up in the nooks and crannies like this. It's a nice effect I like to model. So with most of that pretty much done and the hard steps out of the way, um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the roof, which I think is the relatively easy part here. And I'll, I'll try to keep this relatively short, but I also should mention that on the sides, I did do the sides already, but there's not really too much to do on that. Um, I just basically did a, a 
base grime coat here and there and what I'll do is come back and add some streaks and such later on which I'll show you uh, but for now we'll go ahead and work on the roof and the roof is pretty clean as far as I can tell by these photos but I am gonna just add a little little grime here and there especially around the the, uh, the top of the air filter where you'll see a lot of that kind of that grime build up and that's what I'm gonna try to focus on is this area up here so I'm just gonna try to streak it like this and I'll get a little bit in between here around where the horn is I'm just like I said I'm doing this based on these photos but uh, for the most part it's just really dirty from exhaust so it, a little bit in these fans it looks like there's a little bit of shadow in there that's looking pretty good so now, with that done, we're going to go ahead and focus on the important part here of any diesel, the exhaust soot, right here.